edition of On Tap, presented by FCSI of the Americas. I'm Wade Kaler, Executive Director. On Tap this week, I get to talk to a newly returned FCSI member who I've always enjoyed talking with over the years. Please welcome the principal at Stuart Davis Design, Mr. Stuart Davis. Hey, Stuart, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Thanks. Great to be here, man. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Absolutely. You've had a lot of change over your last week or last week, last year. So I'm yeah. excited to get into that and talk a little bit about what you're up to now and, and learn more about, you know, we, I know a lot of your background and such, but I, I don't really know, know a lot of your background. So I'm really excited about getting into this and learn a little bit more about your history and then also what you're up to now and, and let people know a little more, peel the curtain back a little bit further on Stuart Davis. So hopefully we'll find that's a nice space. Um, at least that's what I'm hoping for. So, <laughs> so before we get started, as I do with everybody, Stuart, let's talk about your background. How did you get your start in food service consulting and, and where did it come from that made you, or what made you go into this part of the industry? Great question. So, um, you know, I think, um, when I was 19 years old, I was at a crossroads in my life of either going to college or doing something else. Um, and uh, the woman who I was dating, who actually became my wife, um, really saw a talent with me for cooking. And actually, I remember one time at dinner, she just basically told my parents point blank, it'd be a waste of money to send me to college and send me to cooking school. And they're like, huh, okay. And so then, you know, that summer we started touring around, um, decided on New England Culinary, Necky in Montpelier, Vermont um, for my, my cooking degree, uh, went there. Uh, my wife uh, uh, is from Chicago, so when I wrapped up uh, cooking school, we wanted to move to Chicago. Great restaurant scene here. You know, her family and sister were here, so it just made sense. So I basically, you know, moved from Vermont cooking school to Chicago um, and started working for a handful of chefs here. Um, yeah. I was cooking for about 10 years. Uh, Le Nomad, True Restaurant, a couple others. Uh, never reached, like, the level of executive chef. I think that the highest I got was Executive Sue for, for Rick Jermont, so it's true. Um, but I always just, I always saw people around me being better cooking than I did. I was always, always loved food, always loved being part of the process, but these guys were like raw talent. And some of those guys I was cooking with are now some of the best chefs here in the city, uh, Chicago, where I live. And I was just like, ugh, I was, I was frustrated. And I, this is, oh, I'm 30 years old, you know, don't want to be, you know, a chef, but yet that's all I have is the skills that I have. Uh, so I go, you know, to a dinner party. My wife's, one of my wife's friends has a uh, housewarming party. And I run this young uh, reporter, a new 11 um, food writer, yeah. uh, just out of the blue. And we started talking. And then she, once we realized we're both were in the industry, she was like, well, what do you want to do when you're 50? And I was like, not cook. And she's <laughs> like, well, shit, you know, what, what else, you know, what else are your passions? And I was like, when I was, you know, a kid, you know, I wanted to be, you know, a chef. Or an architect, right? Those are my two like loves. I've always loved architecture. I've always just loved buildings. I've always loved cooking. And she was like, "What well, do you can combine those two things and, and make career at it?" And I was like, "What? There's a thing like that? Like, well, tell me more." Um, she gave me a number for uh, for Ron Kuzer at Sydney Whittle, okay. and I uh, I called them. And at first they were like, "No, we're not going to hire a chef." And I'm like, "What do you mean? Like, I I've worked in kitchens all my life. Like, why wouldn't she want somebody?" to to have the knowledge I have. And they're like, well, yeah. you didn't go to Cornell. I'm like, well, no, I didn't go to Cornell, but I went to cooking school, like, you know. Yeah. And so they're like, yeah, sorry, you know. But I knew that this was something I want to pursue. So I basically stocked Cindy Whittle for three months. <laughs> and I made them hire me for some ridiculously low price that like it's 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 like it's it's maddening to think how 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 low it was. But I got my foot in the door at Cindy Whittle, right? Yeah. And I spent five years there really learning, like, you know, the the the, the foundation of, of being consultant. Right. I mean, yeah. Cindy Whittle, you know, one of the OGs in the game. Like, you know, I, right. they taught me how to hand draw, how to read cut sheets, you know, how to how to do field site visits. I mean, it's really like way the foundation. Um, right. And, you know, Cindy Whittle loved them, um, but they focused more on, you know, you know, Things that I didn't do as a chef, you know, more of the corporate dining, you know, more of like, you know, like theme parks, you know, large right. B and I. Um, I came from the restaurant hotel world. Um, okay. So, you know, all my chefs, all my friends at this time were becoming chefs and they're calling me saying, Hey, Stu, I think, you know, like we're doing a restaurant. Would you want to do it? And Cindy Widow was like, No, we don't do restaurants. You know, we focus on these clients. So I'm like, Oh, man. 
you know, and then one day out of the blue, I, I get a call um, from Nexit Design who wants to open a Chicago office. And I was like, wow, I, I've always followed, you know, Russell Stilwell. I think he does an amazing job, still kills it um, with the hiring hospitality projects, right? And I was like, this yeah, would yeah. be an amazing thing to do. So I, I took, yeah. I did it and uh, became their first remote office for Nextet Design, opened a Chicago wow. office almost 10 years ago. Wow. Um, and so from there, you know, my career spanned for, you know, for 10 years, you know, as, you know, running Chicago office for Nextet Design, which was great. I mean, we did a lot of great projects together. Um, yeah. And it really just like, kind of like, um, I don't know, just, just, just solidified the fact that hospitality is, is what I want to do. It's what I'm passionate about. Like I don't do prisons. I, you know, I don't do cruise ships. I, you know, I just, I, I basically do, you know, hotels and restaurants, uh, more okay. chef driven concepts, uh, more of the higher end stuff. Yeah. Um, so and I think that that's been very good to me having the culinary background that I have and just having like basically all my friends who have gone off to other restaurants you know, I've got a great like in-house chef network uh, yeah. of clients who, you know, when they're talking about opening restaurants or they get a gig at a hotel, I, I get those 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 like underground referrals right away. Um, so yeah. it's, it's been it's been very blessed uh, to do so. So um, you know, that's kind of like the nutshell of Stuart Davis of how I got here. I say what what you so you mentioned two of the largest, if not the largest two, uh, food service consultant. Uh, firms out there what made you decide uh, in the last year to go out on your own so a great question I, I think for me um you know i've really i really i really think the devil's in the details and i really like geeking out and moving over just you know you know exact outlet heights and, and just the fabrication details and really make those, those kitchens that have that 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 pop so like you know you see them on the covers of like you know you know, high-end hotel magazines, read architectural digest. Just, I really think that a beautiful kitchen is something to behold. And yeah, I wanted to slow down and take on fewer projects and really just kind of do that style. So you know, okay. um, yep. you know, next step design. It's 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 fast paced. It's great. I mean, they're 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 always busy. You know, they do great work. You know, so you're you're never short on work to do. I just felt like I need more time to kind of like focus on what I love. And then also, you know, a personal note, just be more of, you know, a husband and, you know, and a father and, you know, and, yep. and just and spend time and not travel, you know, as much as I is the rock star travel as I was doing. So for yeah. me, it was more of just like a life reset. I think COVID had a huge influence on that being yeah. with the family, you know, just enjoying everybody working from home because life, as we all know, it slowed down. And I got, yeah. I, I liked that pace. So I was like, wow, if I go to duck out at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday to go take my kid to a basketball practice, I can do so. Um, so it was, it was more of a, you know, I think most of it was a lifestyle choice for me, you know, most of it. And also, yeah. I just kind of wanted to focus on on doing fewer projects, but doing those projects more and just really yeah, yeah. taking ownership from start to finish of like initial hand sketches yeah. to basically, you know, giving the keys to the car, if you will, to the, you know, yeah. to the, the chef saying, here's your new baby, you know, take Good care of you. No, I think that's great, man. I, I'm I'm really happy for you. I, I think that you you've always done amazing work. So I think it makes sense. And and COVID, if nothing else, taught us that we can slow down a little bit, or we or right. even if you can, you, you might need to. And so sometimes, as some people, it's just been like I I didn't realize how much I was doing, or how much I was stressed. I was putting myself under until I was didn't have to. And then when the travel stops and everything for a year and a half. I mean, I think a lot of people have gone through this and, um, yeah. and found their place where they're like, you know what? I, the, the mega money or the mega busyness isn't what I want to do anymore. It was what I was doing and I loved it, but now I don't want to. So I think it's great, man. So you reviewing your website, you know, over your career now, so far, you've done a tremendous amount of restaurants and a lot of food service operations and hotels and, and so others what's the favorite one you've worked on or what's the one you go back to and go, I killed it on this one. This one was the one that I'm really the most proud of. Great question. I think, I think one of the first ones, and it was, you know, it, you know, um, and I didn't get to see it all the way finished, but I did like 90% of it um, was solo house here in Chicago. I think that that right. one project where I was at Cindy Whittle um, really kind of like help weigh the foundation and almost like make my bones for the transition of going from Cindy Whittle to next step design. Yeah. Um, that one single project gave me kind of the street cred I needed um, yeah. to, you know, to have restaurant tours in the Chicago wind area, which has historically been a D this is a D town, right? Like right. To, to ask somebody to hire me above market rate 
when they get the drawings for free air quotes from a dealer yeah right like it's an uphill battle and i would just say i did so house they'd walk through it and they're like oh we get it we get what you bring to the table and that led to opening doors with like you know hog salt boca group you know let us entertain you one-off hospitality yeah. all the heavy hitters here in chicago um i think that that one project was is, is near and dear you know to my heart um nice. i think it could be a number two um just wrapped up uh c siamo for for danny myers for unis hospitality group uh manhattan west i think that yeah. was um i think that was probably my, my you know you know where i am now in, in terms of design i think that's probably my best work um, very nice. happy um, extremely happy with that project so very cool well you talked about your best work where you were there and versus now kind of led me into the next question for you is as a consultant you've been doing for a long time you started fairly young to be honest with you i mean you're 45 now if i'm not correct. Yep. so in our world 45 is not old at all it's not even <laughs> close so you started off young i mean so uh, as we've talked about new people and new people in the industry and, and younger people getting in the industry, how long did it take you before you got, you gained your proficiency or you felt like I get this industry now, not only the, well, definitely the consulting part of it, but also the industry part of that consulting part. That's a great question. I, I would say honestly, 10 years. I, I think that the first five years, uh, especially at Cine Little when I was there, just learning all the nuts and bolts of like, you know, how does plumbing work? How does electric work? You know, hood, yeah. CFM, what the heck is that? There's just so much like engineering and so much stuff yeah. that, you know, I, I never knew about that, you know, you have to learn, you know, and then, you know, on top of that, you have to learn how to design things. Like you want to build a custom counter, like you have to give someone a design intent of what to build. So there's just, you know, so many things like that I would say like my second half at next step design, right? So I'm 10 years in at that point. Is when I really started to find like my own lane, my own voice, if you will, and I I, yeah. I I could stay like I think I have like a DNA, a thumbprint that I leave on jobs, which is like unique to me. Like you know, yeah. um, you know, I could always tell like you know a Mark Steck Novak job or a Jimmy Huey job, a Russell Stillwell job, or you know Eric McConnell yeah. job, because there's just little things that they do sometimes unconsciously, but just like how they see these kitchens do that you say, oh, I, I get it, I know who this is. Kind of like leaving, you know, your 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 mark. Um, yeah. I would say, yeah, I say 10 years for me to like, have the confidence to walk into a room of 20 people. And then they're like, what do you think, Stu? And I'm like, this is what I think. And then I actually have like the voice of reasoning behind my thoughts to like, yeah. you know, bend an ear and make sure, you know, they understand. I, I, I it's, yeah. you know, anyone who thinks they're going to get in this industry and be like, you know, like skilled at it and have their own firm in three years is kidding themselves. It's just, it's just, yeah. there's so much knowledge. Um, and, and it's not even like, I think it's like half knowledge. It's also half like it's it's not you know like what you know it's almost like who you know and yeah, this absolutely. this industry is so small um, that it really is a a, a network of, of contacts and, and people that you know that help you uh, along the way like if you don't have a good yeah. support team outside of your own firm with your dealers your reps your engineers your architects and whatnot you're not going to survive so to build up that whole you know network it takes time you know. Yeah. Um, and is there other consultants involved with that too? I mean, do you have like a group of consultant friends that you've met through the industry that you, you know, that you're comfortable enough to go, Hey, I'm not exactly sure about this. I, you know, maybe you're not familiar with that segment or maybe it's just like you're second guessing yourself and you go, do you have that group of colleagues you feel comfortable enough to reach out to and go, Hey, what would you do here? Or here's what I'm thinking. Sure, I, I do. I, and I still call Russell Stillwell, my old principal all the time, you know, um, you know, the guy, you know, has been doing this much longer than I have still reach out for advice, especially <laughs> for business matters, right? You know, like, how, how would you do this? Um, you know, uh, you know, Kristen here, at S2O, a dear, dear friend, um, she has been like, invaluable, uh, to say the least, yeah. you know, uh, of helping yeah. me out, guiding me on my way. Um, and I just have to say, like, since when I went on my own, the amount of support from, you know, members of FCSI and other consultants have just, it's been almost like, it's been amazing, almost like overwhelming how much support. I mean, like people offering like, you know, their 11400 front ends to get me going, you know, if, you know, offloading project work that they were too busy making recommendations for me, you know, just the amount of love from the brothers and sisters of FCSI was like, it was, it, it was like, that's one of the reasons I came back, you know, it's just like, holy crap, like these people really do stick together. And I think that I would not be 
in a place I am now without that love and support from from the FCSI community. It's been nothing but just amazing. So that's in fa- that's fantastic to hear. I, I know that um, you know everybody's really busy right now. I get uh, you know at headquarters, I I get a couple calls at least every month, if not almost weekly, of of consultants that are, do you know anybody looking for work or or hey, I'm a little slow right now. Do you know anybody that's looking to offload some stuff or whatever? And so we've almost become at headquarters a little bit of a matchmaking as much as we can with people because it, of that same reason. Like there are people like, hey, I'm a little in between sessions right now or in between uh, clients. I could take on more work if you know anybody. And then the vice versa where, hey, we're slammed. If you know anybody that you, that you can forward to us, let us know. And we keep all that private, obviously, until it's not a, needed to be private. But it's it's been really cool to see the community come together during this time where people are busy and most time everybody's really busy right now, but there are times where, especially if you're like yourself that's getting started out or, or a a solo preneur or something like that, where you maybe go from one client to another client and don't have a bunch lined up that people come up and go, Hey, I'm, I don't have an, I've got another project, but it doesn't start for another two months. So if somebody needs some drafting help or design help or BIM or whatever, I can do that for a little bit of, you know, make a little bit of money on the side is not a bad thing. So um, what is one thing about Stuart Davis that nobody would ever guess about you, whether it's a, a habit, a personality, uh, something that's secretive of, of Stuart that nobody would ever guess. Wow. You know, um, you know, I've always wanted to get, this is weird. I'm saying this out loud. I've always wanted to get into knitting, honestly, like crochet and like, and hear me out on this one. Okay. I, I, you okay. know, I'm actually taking classes next month, you know? So I, I come from the chef world. I'm very fidgety by nature. My wife hates it. Like on a Sunday when she wants to relax, I have to be doing something right. So either it's cooking or doing something. I had to be active. Right. And I'm that way when I travel too. So I was, you know, a couple of years back pre COVID, I was actually sitting next to a gentleman, um, which sounds weird saying sitting next to him, but sitting next to him in the airport yeah. and he pulled out his crochet bag and he was making a scarf. And I was like, I started talking to this guy. I was like, wow, like, that's cool. I'm like, how long have you been doing this thing? Like, I picked it up a couple months ago and I was like, you know, it seems like something that would be good to pass the time, you know, while you're waiting for your next yeah. flight or whatever. And he's like, that's why I got into it. And, yeah. and lo and behold, there's this whole like underground movement of like, you know, of like, you know, people, you know, professionals getting into crocheting just because like requires really nothing right you can travel with it so you know i just i just i just like and you know relaxation for me is like going to a city and exploring as opposed to sitting on a beach i'm not the person who likes to sit still and just like do nothing i have to be so like i think that would be probably something that most people wouldn't know right about me that's that's a great one and i agree with you i'm the same way i'm very i once in a while i can sit back and just relax and sit on the couch, but it's not very often anymore at all, unfortunately. And it does drive my wife crazy as well. <laughs> so, both in that boat. Um, so you talked a little bit about all the, the, the good things and everything and all the, the things you're proud of. Let's, let's turn the tables a little bit. Let's talk about what's one, what's been your greatest screw up? that you've had in your career so far. And, and, and I don't want to just focus on the negative part because we all make mistakes as consultants, as a consultant though, you know, what was your greatest screw up and what did you learn from that to move forward on? Great question. So, uh, I, yeah, I know exactly. And it wasn't really, it wasn't my exact screw up, but it happened on my watch. So I was working on a hotel project, uh, about four or five years ago. And, uh, you know, it's been awarded, it's being built. Um, and then got a call from the KEC saying, basically, you know, our, you know, hundred thousand dollars of walking coolers, none of them have floors because we didn't specify them and they're all in recessed pits, which you need the floor to build the inner thing. I'm like, Oh my gosh. And I was like, you're kidding me. And they're like, no, like, you know, no one caught it until now. Uh, what do we do? And, you know, I, uh, sat on it for a couple of days. And, and finally I just, I called the walk-in manufacturer and I was like, you know what? I fucked up, you know, how, how, how can we make this right? You know what I mean? And so, um, they looked at, you know, the long history we had of of specifying their products and they came back to me about a week later and they said that we, we got you on this one, you know, just don't do it again. 
and uh, make sure that we're, we're, we're you know, we're, we're prime spec. And I was like, absolutely. You know, um, yeah. it was, it was a moment where I thought I was gonna get fired. Honestly, it was such a big mess up, yeah. right? You know, that like, it was, you know, and it's just one little thing, but you know, you know, when you're moving fast and doing a lot of stuff, it, it went unnoticed. And um, nice. it was, uh, it was a gut check. And so I, yeah. I, you know, it's one thing I always look at now, walk and drawings, make sure we have floors, but yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, it was huge. Um, so, but yeah, we definitely recovered from that one. And, you know, and, you know, you know, the KC kept it close to their chest, which was amazing. So owner never knew a difference. They got their walk-ins and they were very happy. It never, it never, it never escalated to like that level. Um, but yeah, that was a big one. That, that was, that was one for, for, for the ages, um, you know, um, you know, so. What's, uh, what's one, uh, last question before we get into some fun questions for you. What's one piece of advice you give to somebody in in college or high school or something thinking about getting into the food service industry? What's one piece of advice you'd give them um, to get into the consulting industry or the food service industry? Work it. Work in a restaurant. Work in a hotel. Just just do it for a year. You know, like do it. Just just get in there. And if you can do work front of house, back of house, do it. But just I, I think, you know. A, it gives you, you know, empathy for the people working in the kitchens in the front of houses that you're going to design, right? How can you make it a better experience for them? Um, how can you make it more operationally efficient? Because you know, if you know, if you've got so many steps between here and there, it's, it's just not good. I think that, um, unfortunately, there's a lot of people in this profession from from dealers, from designers, from everybody who haven't actually worked in in a kitchen, right? Yeah. And and I think that you know. You know, do it while you're younger, while you can, you know, do that and do it, you know, t take a summer job, whatever it is, but just work it if you want to get into this industry, because I yeah. think that you need to understand the people that you're designing kitchens, you know, bars, spaces for, you know, and if you don't, then I, I don't know if that really, you know, gives you an edge or somebody else. Like, I think that right. my career has been based on the fact that, you know, I do have street cred and the fact that, you know, I, you know, I did work yeah. it for many years. That was my, my profession. A lot of other people have as well, but I think that at least... You know, try to do at least a year if you can, yeah. you know, in, in the kitchen, you know, yeah. um, or, or front of house, but simply in the kitchen. And I think that, yeah. you know, um, you know, just, you know, the most important person and the least person, you know, who's ever thought about is dishwasher, right? You know, yeah. my, my first job, right, was was working at a barbecue restaurant in Lawrence, Kansas, scrubbing baked beans baked on the, yeah. you know, pan. So I, I feel the pain, you yeah. know, of being a dishwasher, right? And when that person doesn't call for their shift and you have to wash dishes, it's just, you just, you just know. So you want to make sure that, you know, it, moving forward, those dish rooms are ventilated well, bright light, you know, Absolutely. give them all the tools they can to help them out, right? So yeah. I think that, um, yeah, I think, you know, live it before you design it, I think, right? So L Little did I know in, in, in grade school in my little town, uh, I thought it was the coolest thing and, and, and so did others when we would work in the kitchens, and we're, you know, we're talking like fourth, fifth grade, sixth grade was the highest level we went to in our in elementary schools. And I was d washing dishes back then as a fifth and sixth grader. And, and I, we all thought it was so cool because we were back in the kitchen and in the school and so had no idea like what we were, we were child labor, basically. <laughs> you wouldn't be allowed to do it anymore, but you, you did learn a lot. And then I worked in many, many other places. Uh, I worked in the restaurant industry for a long time before I got into association management. And you're absolutely right. I, I actually, I, not only food service consultants, I think everybody should have to work in a restaurant. I, it's been, it's kind of a cliche, but everybody should have to do something in a restaurant for at least a year of their life, you know, because uh, the empathy, and that was the perfect word you chose. It's understanding what that person is going through to work in that restaurant that's serving you, regardless whether it's fast food, fine dining, fast casual, it doesn't matter. They are not the only ones responsible for what you are about to get as a meal. And you need to understand all the steps that your food is going through before it even gets to you. Um, and I think it's a great experience for anybody to do it. I, I And I, I know that if anything good has come out of – COVID, I know that's weird to say, is more and more restaurants, at least in my area, are actively trying to get high schoolers to work in the restaurants again. And they were kind of getting away from that where we live for a while. Uh, they were trying to hire more of the college students and the and the adults. But I think it's great experience for anybody. And I, I highly recommend any, even if you only do it for, like you said, a summer, it doesn't matter. Just do it for a little bit. At least you get a better, because I was, I loved working in restaurants, but I was a 
and I was bart. I was a good bartender. I was, I loved working back in the kitchen. I was fine host. I was the worst waiter you've ever had. So, and admittedly, so I, I think my ADD part of me just didn't work very well with being a waiter because once I served you food, I didn't want to deal with you anymore. It's like, I'm going to move over to this table now, forgetting about you. So I was terrible. So I was good about taking the order. It was just once I took your order, I'm done. So oh, I met my wife at a restaurant. I mean, she was, she was, she was my, my manager when I, when I was a shorter cook, you know, and oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I had to cover a couple front of house shifts. I hated it. I, I, it was, yeah. it was, I like, I, I like the, I like the freaks and the geeks in the back of house. Like those are my exactly. people. Like, it's just like listening to like having the classic rock being played on some like, you know, crappy, like radio, you know, and just, <laughs> I don't know, like learning life yeah. through people who were like, you know, why are you still here? But yet they were cool. Yeah. Like they were like, yeah. I don't know. We're a lot of good life lessons. It was, it was fun. Absolutely. It was like, you, could, you know, it was, you do with people all walks of life, you know, yep. every race, creed, color, race, religion. And it's just a good hodgepodge because in the day yeah. you all have to get along to get the food out on, on time. So it's just, it's yeah. like a little model you in if you will right in yep. the kitchen. no 100 so, yeah. it's a melting pot that kitchen that whole restaurant like you said it, i don't care what your background is what what nationality you are what religion what color your skin it didn't matter everybody's no. in the same boat at that point and it all works together well, at least you hope it does but it should be all working together for one thing and that's just to serve the customer so yeah. I think it's great five, advice. Man. Yeah, get your shit yeah. together, man. Hundred percent. Yeah. Well, so. that's all the formal questions I've got for you today, Stuart. But before we get going, <laughs> I I definitely have some would you rather questions. I think you're going to enjoy. Oh, all right. So we'll kick right into it with would you rather buy ten things you don't need every time you go shopping, or always forget the one item you do need when you go shopping? Oh man. You know what? I think I'd probably just go forget. I I, I, okay. I hate clutter. So I'd have a bunch of stuff okay. that I would not need. It would drive me nuts. I, I think right. that, yes, I'd have to, you know, just, you know, I have that walking moment going in the cooler. Yeah. Well, why am I here? And just going to have to live with that <laughs> <the> next time. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you're in there because you don't have a floor in it. Um, anyway, <laughs> would you would you rather have a personal housekeeper or a personal chef? Oh, personal chef. hundred percent. Like I love cooking, but it would be, it'd be nice to have that, you know, to have that. Yeah. Personal chef. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Would you rather be an extra in an Oscar winning movie or be the lead actor in a box office bomb? Oh, extra. I'm too introverted for the, uh, for the lead. No, no <laughs> way. Yeah. <laughs> would you rather watch nothing but Hallmark Christmas movies or nothing but horror movies for the rest of your life? You know, I've never been a horror guy. I hate to say it, but I have to go Hallmark, I think, man. Yeah. I, that's why I love that question because it's you don't know where it's going to go, but it's either <laughs> horror or Hallmark. And so many people are going to have to admit they want to watch the Hallmark, which yes. makes it even better. I, I, hopefully I'm not alone. I mean, hopefully there's a whole like lifetime. No, you're cert- people, no, you know? no, no, you're certainly not alone at all. Trust me. Um, would you rather have a pause or a rewind button in your life? Oh. I think I'd rather have a pause button. Okay. I think that my mind sometimes goes so fast, faster than I can speak, and I am a fast talker. It'd be nice to like hit pause, collect your thoughts, and then do it, I think. Nice. Would you rather win $25,000 yourself or have your best friend win $100,000? Well, I just started a business, so I'm going to have to take (laughs) $25,000. Good point. Good point. (laughs) Would you rather be in a zombie apocalypse or a robot apocalypse? Ooh. I think I'm gonna have to go zombie. I've, wa- yeah. I've, I've watched enough Walking Dead. I think I think I know how to survive. So. Okay, very good. Stab the brain. Um, <laughs> would you rather give up your cell phone for a month or give up bathing for a month? Wow. I think I have to go cell phone. Honestly, I don't think I could go that long for a month. Yeah, I'm a- I'm actually shocked coming out of COVID that I have not had more answers of bathing because I think people did give up bathing for a month at times. <laughs> so, um, but people are giving up their cell phones, which is kind of surprising to me. Um, you know, what? I, I just I, I don't, yeah I like to unplug. I I, I I try to like keep it away from me at certain times a day. So I think that a month of it, you know, it'd be yeah. it'd be painful, but I think it'd be worth it mentally yeah. for sure. Would you rather be able to speak any language or be able to communicate with animals? Oh, wow. I have to take animals. I'm a big animal lover. I'm going to go animals. Yeah. Okay, perfect. 
Would you rather always have that annoying song stuck in your head or always have an itch that you can never reach? Wow. I'm going I'm to have to go. I'm going to have to go itch. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, really? Man, you're you know what? I, I'm a big music guy to have one song and repeat like that. Just, just, I, I think I really just deal with the itch. You can always drown out with music, I guess. Fair enough. No judgments, Stuart. No, no, judgments no, no. Here. Just, just, I'm just surprised. Um, <laughs> would you rather read the book or watch the movie? I'll read the book. Okay. Would you rather own your own theme park or own your own zoo? Oh, theme park. Zoos, 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 uh, depress me. Yeah, no way. Yeah, not a zoo guy. Would you rather be compelled to high five everyone you meet or be compelled to give a wedgie to anyone in a green shirt? High five. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Would you rather have a completely automated home or a self-driving car? Self-driving car. Okay. Last but not least, would you rather be able to go to any theme park in the world for free for the rest of your life or eat at any drive through restaurant for the rest of your life for free? Being that I have two high schoolers, I'm going to have to go for the drive through Those kids eat me at a house and home. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Very good. Well, that's all the questions we've got for you today, Stuart. But before we let you go, uh, tell us a little bit more about how people can find more about you and your firm. Appreciate it. So uh, I can be found at stuartdavisdesign.com. That's S-T-U-A-R-T, uh, davisdesign.com. Or uh, they can uh, they can call me if they, if they want, okay. Um, okay. you know. Which is posted on the on the website. So if you guys want to go there and link, you know, it's also info as well. But um, yeah, easy to find. Very good. Well, that wraps up this edition of On Tap, presented by FC Inside the Americas. A huge thank you to Stuart Davis for joining us today on the show. Be sure to like and subscribe to whatever platform you choose. And as always, cheers. <laughs>